Android is not Linux. More specifically, it's not GNU Linux. Um, so let's get into what exactly it is. Also, why is it that people have problems emulating Android? This is a big deal because so many people say, well, Android's just like Linux or it is Linux. And it really isn't. It uses a very, very small piece of the Linux kernel and really is an abomination compared to what a regular Linux desktop looks like. So in this video, let's get into what it exactly is, what it isn't. Because when people say Android is Linux, I say that's the equivalent of saying Sony PlayStation is FreeBSD. If you want to know what I just meant there, look up FreeBSD space PlayStation. You'll realize PlayStation is based off of FreeBSD as well. But that's not this video. This video is specifically about Android and Linux and how it works. Before we get into the video, I do live stream over on Twitch both Monday and Friday. Uh, so if you'd like to ask a question, head over there, ask me live, or you can check out all the archives of all my past streams over on Chris Titus Tech Streams. The links are in the description. So with that, let's get into our video. So let's get down to it. What did Google do to Linux and how is it using Linux? So uh, Linux has a lot of really tight licensing, especially around the fact that it's like not for profit kind of thing. Everything's free with Linux and the open source is kind of what it's touted for. If you're in the Linux community for any period of time, typically you're an open source advocate such as myself. But at the same time, there's certain companies that look at Linux and go, ooh, I'd like to use that, but I want to actually sell my product afterwards. And if I base it on the Linux kernel, there might be some licensing shenanigans. You know, I mentioned earlier about Sony PlayStation using FreeBSD. Their whole reason for doing that was because of the GNU Linux license or uh, the license that Linux uses. So with that said, what did Google do exactly here? Now, Google has kind of a little bit of a roundabout. I think it ruins the spirit of Linux, you know, as far as being open and, and how uh, free it is. Uh, a lot of times Android at its core is collecting user data and then giving it to Google and then Google takes that data and sells it, which there's no surprise here. Google is the like mammoth of data collection and selling that data for a hefty profit. That's how they make all their money with Google search and YouTube and all that. So I can't really complain that much about it. Let's move on to what Linux actually does. So how did they modify it? The first thing is they modified it with the libraries. So you have the kernel that has the drivers and everything to kind of make things go, but also you have the libraries or the user space land that also makes programs and things go. Hence why a lot of the hardcore vets in the Linux space will say GNU Linux because it uses the GNU user space to make programs run. Uh, kind of a high level. I'm trying to oversimplify this. So if I uh, miss any technical details, that's why. Um, but that's oversimplification of just how a regular Linux distribution would work. Android took a small portion of the Linux kernel, uses it, and then adds its own different libraries on. This makes programs run completely differently, but they didn't stop with just the user libraries or the libraries that programs use. It also uses a completely different runtime. A lot of people call this the Dalvik runtime. And they've used this all the way through Android 4. In Android 5, they switched to something called the ART, which is the Android runtime. And it still uses everything that Dalvik did. It's just a little more efficient, a little bit better, or at least supposedly so. So it has different runtimes and it has different libraries. That's why everything works completely different. Also, that's why you can't just take an Android package and run it on your Linux box. And that kind of sucks, but that's why. And also you can emulate and do virtual machines, but you see a performance loss because it has to load all these extra libraries and then it has to run a whole different runtime than your traditional program that runs natively. So that's why Android's so different. And, and some people might underscore this and just say, well, it's still using technically the Linux kernel. I'm like, man, it, it's the equivalent of running a Windows VM on your system at this point. I mean, Windows and Android could be just the same. I mean, as much of an abomination as that statement is, the performance loss 
from running an Android VM and running a Windows-based VM and running Windows programs in the Windows VM and the Android programs in the Android VM, technically, the Windows VM probably performs better. Uh, there's a lot of performance loss because of how Google packages Android up and does this. And that's why it's horrible. That's why I'm so pumped about like the Pine phone and how that operates, how it uses the full Linux stack. It, it uses separate libraries. This is a big deal. It's also why like the Pine phone and other Linux phones can't just grab the Android apps and just hit play. That's the big difference. That's what this video is about, and I hope it clears it up for you. But I'm sure there's something I missed, so check the comments down below. I just wanted to say we need to stop saying Android's Linux because it's really not. It uses a portion of it and really abuses that portion of it, in my opinion, and kind of takes away from the spirit of Linux um, instead of complementing it. So I, I know that's kind of a bold statement, and it sounds like I'm coming down on Google. I'm really not. Android is meant for a mobile operating system, and they did these things not necessarily for nefarious purposes, but it does make it very proprietary, and, and you really can't use it very well. So I'm really pushing a lot of the Linux phones because, one, it maintains that open source spirit, and uh, a lot of times I really want the whole desktop world and mobile world to merge. And really to make that happen, it needs to kind of run on these same libraries. That's why it can't happen on Android. Yes, you can kind of gimmick it up with like the Samsung Dex and say, oh, I got a desktop with my phone. But no, that's not really a future. That's just a gimmick. Really to have these things happen, the desktop libraries and the mobile libraries need to be the same in the closest thing to making this happen is a Linux phone. So it's not me just saying, oh, hey, I'm a Linux fanboy. I really love this because it runs Linux. It's more about those libraries and having everything coexist because I really want to use my phone like I use my desktop. And then you also have the security, privacy, and all this other stuff that everyone always touts that is just excellent. But for me, that, that universal synergy will never happen until we have this uh, um, collision, basically, and have all that mesh together and get this wonderful synergy between the desktop and the mobile world. And it's never going to happen on iOS. It's never going to happen on Android. Um, and this is where the closest thing is. So when people say, hey, Android's Linux, we should just make that happen for mobile. And I'm like, it's been there, done that, they've morphed it, it's a complete Frankenstein of a project, it's not what a regular desktop will ever look like or ever run. <sighs> so, with that said, I would love to jump off here, but I also need to clarify a couple things to kind of heat off some of the comments I'm going to get. The first of which is there's Linux distributions that run Android apps, um, and this is just basically trying to reverse engineer what Google did, modifying those libraries, putting switching those out, and then using these runtimes that I specified in this video. These are not inherently Linux distros. Uh, I want to just go ahead and say that. So when you say run Anbox, run Bliss ROMs, run Phoenix OS, these are heavily modified Linux distros and are not in the spirit of like a pure Linux operating system. I just want to go ahead and throw that out there. I always get these comments, and I'm not saying that I won't try these out because I totally will and I'll make a video about them but I want to just tell you they're just a complete different thing they're they're a Frankenstein they either tack on extra libraries and add a lot of bloat to the actual system and that's why they run kind of like stuttery or just not as well as a stock performance also I want to point out that Android is a lot bigger project a, a lot bigger overhead than a traditional Linux system. So when you have the regular Linux libraries, the regular Linux kernel, all these things, it's actually, you would think that the, the Android system would be a lot less in bloat, but because of how they do their packaging, how they do the runtimes, and how they use those different libraries from regular Linux, it's actually bigger than regular Linux. So a lot of people say, well, Linux is just a lot bigger and those types of things. No, it's actually the opposite. Linux is smaller so there's a lot of room for just the future for things to get so much better than they are right now. Um, I just look at how the current state of technology is and all the misinformation out there with folks. And I kind of want to clear up these few things. And I hope 
that it's well responded, but I know this really goes and cuts against the grain about what many corporations are saying, also about a lot of the information that's out on the internet right now. Um, but I wanted to just specify these things because I think they should be common knowledge and not just uh, a bunch of crap that exists right now. So hopefully this made a lot of sense to you. If it didn't, let me know in the comments. And if I got any factual you know, uh, points incorrect, make sure to let me know in the comments. I'll likely respond within the first couple of days. So with all that, let me know. And a big shout out to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.